Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gonna talk. Right. Because we've said that. Because even in Dallas, you said that where um, when you have people who still go out here to try to make changes, you have to also be careful because some people go out here to try to make changes but just to look good on social media. They go in different cities and say, okay, I want change. I want the violence to stop, but they have all these cameras up and, you know, just to make it seem like they're doing something good, but they're not really investing the time and being there when the cameras are not on. Yeah, their boots not around to the ground when the camera's not around. Right. And that's the difference. A lot of times uh, people are doing the real the work, the mm -hmm. boots, the grunt work, but they don't have the platform to express and give out the information or the things that they're doing to get the community. I've won numerous awards, uh, was involved in Nipsey Hustle, uh, LA Gangs Unite, Biggie Small, a whole lot of uh, civil rights, Margaret Laverne Mitchell, Amadou Diallo, the Death Row 10, uh, the Howard University uh, student killed Prince John. I can name a litany of things. I'm an author, but I try to not talk about me. I don't like what talking do. to me. Mm -hmm. I like doing and telling my experience where it's not braggadocious. It is what it is. Uh, and give back to the community because of the things that I've done. So do you believe that if some, excuse me, one, yes, okay. if you believe, do you believe that if there was someone back then who was doing what you're trying to do now and they did that for you, do you think your outcome would have been different than it, it is now? Well, they did, but it created a gap. You had the Black Panthers, I've witnessed them, us organizations, the Muslims, they were pro-black. They were standing up for civil rights and they era the 60s, the 50s, it's a different era, like 50 years now. My era, the 70s, the 80s. But the thing of it is, we got our ear to the pavement where we right there with everybody, where we can relate to what's going on because we're feeling I get shot at just like everybody else. I'm still going to jail. I'm on 83 years parole. I'm still being unfairly treated in the justice system. So I'm a gamut of all of them. So all of it is uh, painted to me with a brush. And we just have to let, like we did, if we take away Instagram and all that, and let us start telling the stories of how we come up and the things that our parents did and struggle. Because the number one deterrent for crime is age. Mm -hmm. As you get older, mm -hmm. you mellow out. Exactly. I wanted to just ask, well, just kind of, I guess, add on or ask about the, <clears throat> what you said earlier about, I don't know, you, do, you, you like you really don't get on, you know, getting on social media is one thing, but without your story, you know, I think the younger generation don't get to see what really caused the thing that, because a lot of times your history is what helps you to understand where you're going. And you are our history when it comes to what happened in LA, right? So in order for us to see that, then you have to be on platforms like this, the Vlads, all the stuff where these young kids are going, because what it does is it in, injects something, some purity in it to show that people do change and that there is a sense of direction in what uh, transpired in our history. Yes, sir. And uh, make it uh, 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 in short into a nutshell, falsehood cannot coexist permanently with the truth. On social media, a lot of times people tell stories or tales and there's nobody there to validate them or challenge them to where they tell a tale. That's all it is, it's a tale. And therefore they're being influenced by guys that aren't real representations of the communities or the gangs that they're representing. And people get confused uh, when that, and we believe that those that are closest to the problem are more likely than not closer to the solution okay and, and now you most of the influence are on there a lot of them are, are that people really look up to is these rappers a lot of the music and the stuff that's flowing through those avenues is what's influencing our children mm -hmm. so um we have to have platforms to where some real essence of what really going down that's why i love podcasting because it cuts through and say this is this is it too 
This is something that 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 can 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 you know music is one thing because these kids are listening to that, but then then they jump on listening at our channel and they see in all these different rappers and then boom, we hit them with a person like Mr. Melvin Farmer and then they able to they gonna watch it because we know over time that that's a habit forming thing, correct? Yeah, but also every generation has had music R and B the sixties the forties the do wop. So we just can't look in hindsight. Mm -hmm. Their music is no more different than we was talking earlier about the NWA. It's every 10 years you're going to get a different genre of music. And it comes down to drugs, mental health, uh, homelessness, uh, uh, being tough. These are the images that have been cultivated over the years through the generations of music. So we have to let them know that it's a better way, that we can make it a different way, and also hold people accountable for the things that they say on social media. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk.